Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this final episode of this series, we're going to be talking about OpenMP target offloading. So our compute systems have become increasingly heterogeneous, right, over the past few years. So we're no longer in a situation where our large clusters of compute are just CPUs with attached memory. Now we have all kinds of attached accelerators, you know, coming from FPGAs to GPUs and other kinds of custom ASICs. So very fortunately, um, you know, implementers of things like um, you know, parallel versions of the STL algorithms and program models like OpenMP have responded to this by implementing things that make it easier to offload work to these external targets, right? So things not on uh, the actual CPU. So what we're going to be looking at today is this idea of offloading to some target device um, with OpenMP. So let's go ahead and get started here, and we'll start by opening up our baseline here. So we have some very simple code that we're going to be looking at today. So we have a very large array that we're going to be working with. Um, so it's just going to be an array of 2 to the 26 floating point numbers here. So we'll make three different, uh, different allocations here um, for A, B, and C, right? These three arrays of 2 to the 26 elements. And then we're going to fill A and B with some random numbers from this random number generator here. And then finally, we're going to do our actual work, right? And surrounding this, we're going to go ahead and get our wall clock time before and after using just this OpenMP get uh, W time. And in the middle, this is what we're timing here. It's just vector addition. So for our you know, total number of elements we have, what we're going to do is add uh, element I of A and B together and set element I of C equal to that value here. So we're just you know, adding up the you know, corresponding elements of A and B and setting C with that sum. Okay, so that's gonna be our basic uh, code right here, right? We have this very simple problem that we wanna solve, vector addition but we have a massive amount of parallelism that we can exploit here. So we might want to offload it to some massively parallel accelerator that we have. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that with OpenMP. So we'll quit out of here. And before we actually get into our pragma for how we do this, uh, there's a few caveats that I have to mention. Uh, so number one, uh, you'll want to check whether your compiler was built uh, to support this kind of offloading. So for example, I can do G++ dash V to get some um, specs of our compiler here. And specifically what we're looking at this offload target names, right? So you should see a list of names which are um, you know, valid offload targets for how this compiler was built here. Um, likewise, you might need to install some additional uh, libraries um, right, or packages, right, in order to actually do this offloading. Um, so for example, if we go ahead and you know, look through some of my history here, you might need to specifically uh, install something like gcc-offload, and then whatever offload target you're trying to actually compile for here. Um, likewise, you might need to, like I said, uh, install additional toolkits or other kinds of runtime libraries, right, for the specific device that you're targeting. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at our example here, right? This one target.cpp. Um, now, all of our code is exactly the same here, with the exception that we have this uh, pragma above our for loop. And this pragma is how we're actually going to target our device here. So on the right-hand side of the screen, I have a tutorial um, and, and some you know, presentation given at Argon uh, National Lab, so ANL, um, specifically on this OpenMP 4.5 device offloading details. So you can find a lot of great information here about what each of these keywords means. So let's go ahead and break it down into three major sections, just like they do in this presentation. Um, so the first line here, right, this Pragma OMP target teams here, um, let's, let's break this down, right? So Pragma OMP is just saying, you know, we have an OpenMP directive here and that we want the following block of code, right, or section, uh, to run on a target device. This is something that we want to offload. And then specifically, right, we want to, uh, you know, create teams of threads to run on our target device. Um, after that, we have our second line, and this says more what we want to do on the actual, uh, you know, target device, what we want to do with these teams of threads here. So this next part, right, this distribute parallel for SIMD, this is saying that I want to distribute my work in parallel, 
right, for this for loop, right? So I want to split up the iterations of this for loop, and I want to distribute this work in parallel across the different teams I have. And I want to do this work, right, in a SIMD way, a single instruction, multiple data way. And the final line that we have here is really just our data mapping. So we have to remember when we're working with these, um, you know, these targeted accelerators, they often are living, you know, in their completely separate um, own memory spaces. So there are, you know, a you know, very, very few accelerators that are completely tied in with our CPU, where they share the same memory space. So when you want to work with accelerators, it often involves the copying back and forth of data here. And the way that we express this in OpenMP is through this map. So here we have these two map uh, clauses here. So this map where we specify what we want to copy over to the device here. So here we're saying we want to map to the device, right? Our arrays A and B from elements zero to N for both of these. So these are the arrays, right? These arrays of floating point numbers we want to copy to the device. Likewise, we can also map something from the device. So here we're saying that we want to copy C from the device, right? Uh, and we want to copy elements zero to in here. Um, so this is saying after our compute is done here, right? So after we run this for loop doing vector add, we want to copy the results from our device into our uh, local array C here. Now there are cases where we need to do both, right? There's an array that we want to copy to the device, modify in some way on the device and then copy back. So for that, there's a keyword to from that you can use if that's that, that's the you know use case that you have. Now, other than that, our code is exactly the same here, right? Um, you know, same size of an array, two to the 26, random numbers that we generate, um, you know, open MP, you know, wall clock time before and after this vector add section. And then we're gonna print out the time at the very end, right? And then of course, free our memory. So let's go ahead and compile both of these and run both of these and, and see what happens. So the first thing that we can do is we can compile our zero baseline here. And I'll just enable OpenMP because we are using that get wall clock time. And then we can go ahead and compile this one target. So here, right, we're compiling with the same O3 optimization flag, enabling OpenMP, setting our offload target. And then there's a few other flags that I've enabled here and this was really just through trial and error on my own part, getting rid of some of the compiler warnings I was getting related to position independent executables, um, kinds of protection here, and there's no stack protected that I needed to get past kind of warnings and linker errors that I was seeing. Um, so this was just, you know, more experimentally found out on my own local machine. Um, so we'll go ahead and compile that as well. Now let's go ahead and run both of these and see what we get from a performance standpoint. So we'll first run our zero baseline here, and we see that it runs in somewhere on the order of, you know, 90 milliseconds or so, or, you know, 0 0.089, 0 0.09 uh, seconds. So let's go ahead and run our target, right, and see what we get there. And what we see is that it actually takes quite a bit longer, right? It takes somewhere on the order of 4x longer. Um, so, you know, here we're getting around 260 uh, milliseconds here somewhere in the order of 257, right, and so on and so forth. So somewhere in that range, it seems to be significantly slower, right, to actually do this target offloading. Now, one thing that you have to kind of keep in mind here is that when we're offloading to a device like this, um, there is that cost of data movement, right? Um, when we're just computing things locally on our CPU, right, we might not have as much parallelism to exploit, right, on our CPU. However, all of our memory um, is already in place, right, on our machine that we can directly access. We don't need to copy anything, right, uh, to another device and then get it back. So those overheads can be quite high, right, especially if we're doing a somewhat trivial amount of work, right? The cost of our data coordination and data movement can far exceed, um, you know, any benefit that we actually get from that added parallelism. Now, of course, right, to kind of prove this out, you can run something like a profiler, um, you know, on our uh, application that we've offloaded here. And what we can actually see is that our actual main OpenMP function, so this is what we're actually uh, running on our external device here, 
it only took about five milliseconds to actually run, right? Which is significantly, significantly faster than this, you know, 90 milliseconds that we're getting on our CPU. But you see things are actually being dominated by our, our copies, right, of our memory um, to and from, right, our target device right here. Um, so those are things that um, right, you'll have to keep in mind, right, and kind of balance whenever you're deciding, should I offload something to a target device or should I use kind of local parallelism or should I use parallelism at all? Okay. So that's going to go ahead and do it um, for this video and indeed this series. Um, this series was hopefully right, a good introduction to parallel programming, the different styles of parallel programming we have out there through things like the parallel STL, parallel libraries like thread building blocks, um, you know, different types of programming models. So the directive based approaches with OpenMP and also the message passing interface um, that is MPI. Um, and also some various things that we often have to think about in parallel programming. So things like false sharing, um, workload distribution, workload balancing, lock-free, weight-free algorithms, and so on and so forth. Um, so hopefully this was a good introduction to all of that. Um, as for this video, I'll make sure to link this OpenMP offloading details below the video. And of course, you can find this and any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.